Oh, it's a big one. What's happening, guys? Welcome to Don's Adventures. I'm your host, Don Gregorian. On this episode, we're out here at the infamous balcony facing the ocean. We got a super high tide. We are actually at the peak of the tide. It's about 3.30 p.m. right now. Look at that, guys. It's gonna be a rough one, but I'm here. I brought my big gear, big old ocean gear. It's the biggest gear I could find. And the reason is, last time I was here in this at this beach, I got my butt handed to me, guys. Last three times, actually. Every single time, I cut my line on something that was giant. I almost got spooled. I almost, I, I almost landed one, but I couldn't pull him in because you know how it is. Once you get the fish out of the water, it gets, it becomes ten times heavier. Fish in the water is a lot lighter than fish on land. So I wasn't able to land it. It was a giant bat ray, but we're back. We got the big gear. I got 45 pound mono line with me this time. I got some squid. I got some nice octopus hooks. And we're gonna try to land something big, guys. No matter what, I'm gonna try to get something big. And hopefully, as always, we get something that could we could do a catch and cook on. That's the ultimate goal. But I'm here and I'm excited. I can't wait. The weather is perfect. The tide is perfect. Let's set up and start fishing. Okay, guys, so I got it set up here. I'm using a single single dropper loop to minimize any weak points in the, in the setup. On top, we have our leader, which is uh, I'm using a braid. It's probably a 30 pound braid. And it goes to a big old swivel, goes to a 45 pound mono filament line, comes down to that hook, pretty, pretty gnarly hook, really sharp owner hook, the company's owner. They make really good hooks. And I'm using a four ounce pyramid sinker. Now we're gonna rig it on with some squid and cast it out let's go all right guys so i went ahead and set up this guy as well but what i did with this one was i set it up with the two dropper loops set up and with smaller hooks two dropper loops uh two octopus hooks smaller ones and a two ounce bank weight and this one is just straight mono so it's super easy to set up no need to cut an extra uh, leader for it or anything it's just a pretty straightforward setup let's go ahead and cast this guy out i want something to catch smaller fish too I, i'm not just trying to go for giants that's very entertaining as always but um smaller fish make better table fare in my opinion so that went all the way to Mexico guys fish on it's going oh it's a big one it's a big one and we got it on the monster rod which is perfect We got it on the monster rod. Here we go. There's a battle we wanted. We're gaining on it. Oh, it's coming towards us now. I almost lost the rod, guys. It almost went over. I don't know what it's doing. It's like coming towards me. 
This can't be the same fish. <laughs> okay. There we go. I haven't seen it yet. It does feel like a ray. What is this? Yeah, it's a big ray. Guys, it's a huge ray. Check this out. Hold on. Oh man. Right there. You see him, guys? I can't do this one handed. I gotta walk him down. And land him over there. I don't know if the 45 is gonna hold up. Should we risk it? Okay, I pulled the hook. Perfect. I pulled the hook. He just left. Perfect release. Wow, it couldn't have gone any better. Check this out. Did it straighten out my hook? No, it didn't straighten it out. Almost did. That's a really good hook. Everything's still intact. This 45 pound mono line, it didn't give up. Now, if we could just get a big old leopard shark or a guitar fish, that would make my day. Something's going on with this one. battle. I keep pulling and he keeps pulling back. Oh shoot! 
Never mind. That's a giant. That's a huge uh, guitar fish, guys. We're gonna land this one. You know that. Let's loosen up. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, sorry about this movement. Hold on. Sorry about the movement. Hold on, folks. Hold on. Loosen up the drag on this. Okay. Guys, let's go land this thing. Let's go land this thing. We're gonna land it over here by this opening. We have to maneuver them around this rock. There's a lot that could go wrong here. There's a lot that could go wrong. But, he's right there. I don't want it to get like wrapped around. Okay, here's our chance to kind of drag them. Come on. No, 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 don't go back. Come on. Here's our chance. Drag them over here, guys. That way. Come on. Guys, this is not easy. Now I gotta land them here. Okay, you guys, you guys wait here. You guys wait right here. Let me do this, please. Alright guys, I'm gonna put him out of his misery real quick because I gotta carry him up there 
and you're just gonna thrash around. All right, my friends. We got that big boy up here. Let's go ahead and measure him out. Woo! Let's go ahead and measure him out to see how big he is. Because I think this is probably the biggest one. Hey, put this bell down because it's confusing me. I think this might be the biggest one. My PB. What are the chances, guys, that uh, I get him on the light tackle with the tiniest little hook? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. 43 inches. From the tip of the nose. All the way to the tip of the tail, 43 and a half inches, guys. 43 and a half inches. My absolute personal best. This thing has got a lot of meat on him. Yes. I'm gonna cook up some steaks with this guy. I did some skewers last time. But this time we're doing steaks, just steak after steak. As far as painting you a picture of what this harvest looks like, here it is. I mean, I'm literally harvesting. That's why I love guitar fish because it provides, it yields so much meat. Look how many steaks that is. That is crazy amount of meat on this fish. So yeah. Just another view of what you get when you process the guitar fish. It should look like something like this. Use every bit of it possible. All right, I'll see you guys at the cookout. All right, my friends, on to the cooking portion. So I got all the meat sitting here ready to get marinated first thing we're gonna do is we are going to pat everything dry moisture is the marination enemy so let's go ahead and pat everything dry real quick cool that's good to go now um first thing we're gonna use is some olive oil drizzle some olive oil just Drizzle it in the middle, randomly. Just go right in the middle. And now we're gonna crush some, we're gonna crush some garlic, some real garlic, not powder garlic, some real garlic. Just like that. Okay, beautiful. We got all our garlic out. Now, next thing is ginger. This is ginger paste. Next thing is another staple, which is turmeric. There we go. Next, for the spice, just a good old Frank's Red Hot Sauce. Not too much, but we want it to be a little bit spicy. Let's go ahead and put everything into this bag. All that stuff goes right back into the bag where it's gonna marinate for a whole day. There you go, folks. It's gonna marinate for a whole day in the fridge and it's gonna be ready to 
go on the grill. Check this out, guys. We're using natural wood from my yard. No fire starters, no starting fluid, all natural. And I'm recycling all this stuff. And at the end, I'm gonna use the ash that we gather from the fire and we're just gonna give it back to the plants. We're gonna sprinkle all the ash back into the, back under the plants. Mix it up in the soil. And I got some charcoal in there too, but I just wanna get this going and get rid of all this extra wood we got laying around. Once the fire settles down, I'm gonna put the cooking grates on it, the grills, and then we're gonna throw the slabs on top and cook everything up, guys. All right, my friends, we got our fire going pretty well and it's settling down. We're gonna go ahead and put the grates on it now. There we go. I don't use it, I don't like using my propane grill. I rather cook on charcoal. You know, you get that mesquite wood flavor, a smoke flavor. There's nothing like it. There we go. All right, time to give it a little flip. Look at those grill marks. Look at those grill marks. Wow. Wow. My God, dude. It's looking absolutely beautiful. Grill marks look perfect. The texture of the fish looks incredible. It's smelling really well. Mm. Let's flip this belly part. Look at that guys, it looks like pork. It's like white meat, like pork. Look at that, man. Look at that. All right, guys. So uh, some of the smaller ones are done already. Uh, we're going to let the bigger guys sit a little bit more, but uh, we'll go ahead and pick off the like the smaller ones like this guy this is like perfectly done this guy's done yeah that's good to go I think you know what all of these are done look at that come on these are done 
This looks like pork chop, guys. What the heck? Look at this. This literally looks like pork chop. Yeah, let that sit for a second. We'll let this guy sit too. This is done. This is the belly portion. That's the belly meat. Look at that. Look at that. All right, you guys, I am so excited to try this. This is my first time barbecuing guitar fish or any shark on open fire. Um, well, I did the skewers, but I never done them steak style like this. So I got a couple of lime uh, and some spicy, some spicy pickle. We're going to go ahead and squeeze a little bit of lime on top of this. And this is basically the steak portion. This is the tail where I cut it into steaks. And this is technically the back loin. It's the back of the fish on top of the belly portion. So it's a lot thicker, there's a lot, it's a lot juicier. So I'm excited to actually try this. And like I said, guys, I scored the big pieces I scored all the big pieces so it cooks evenly and it lets the marinade uh, seep into the, uh, the meat so everything marinates evenly too. Look at this, white, it looks like pork to me. Oh my god. Guys this reminds me of lobster. The closest thing I could think of is lobster. Look at that. It's got the texture of lobster. Like that's the closest thing I could think of. Wow. It's so juicy. There's absolutely no fishiness to it. I'm eating it with the skin on. If you don't like the skin, you could just remove it. Mmm. Amazing. And that's with the bone in, guys. I cooked it with the bone in. I mean, I don't know if you could, this, this comes through in the camera. But that's like Snow White. It's incredible. Wow. Guys, this is so good. Guitar fish are one of the best eating fish, in my opinion. The amount of meat you can get off of one fish without wasting a whole bunch of it, is incredible. Seriously. One fish is enough to feed a family. Obviously I'm by myself, but I got so much fish left. I got like probably six times this portion left. Okay, you guys saw me eat the steak. Now let's try to get into the the back, I guess the back loin. Look at that. That's all like white flaky meat. Wow, amazing. Another thing, guys, I, I'm going to do, not on this video, but I will do this in the future. I want to make fish dip. I want to smoke some of this. So next time I catch a guitar fish, I'm going to smoke the fish and make some fish dips. Classic fish dips. 
That's incredible. And it does, it's not even a bony fish. There's absolutely no bones in it. Just like by the ribs, that's all there is. It's not like a trout where there's like a thousand bones in there and you gotta like pick it as you eat. It's not like that. This is all just straight meat. Even the dark meat tastes good. Like the whole thing tastes good. Well, my friends, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you enjoyed the catch and cook, the entire process. Getting the fish, butchering it, marinating it, and making it into a meal. And it's super easy. Anybody could do this, guys. Anyone. Just watch the videos, learn what to use, go out there and do it yourself. It's really easy. I appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate all my subscribers. Thank you for all the thumbs up, all the comments. If you haven't subscribed yet, go in and subscribe because there's a lot more of this coming. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.